Our last section in Unit 3 is Section 4.4, where we talk about solving exponential and logarithmic functions and equations. So we're going to be using all of the skills we have learned and all of the rules and things that we have worked on to apply them to solving expressions and equations. I'm sorry, solving equations. You don't solve expressions. Always remember to work smarter, not harder. Choose the easiest method to solve. Now this is true in life in general, but it's true in mathematics. There's typically way more than one way to get to an answer. Um, some ways are more simple and more elegant than others. Use the direct path when you can. The one-to-one -one property is one of those more direct pathways sometimes. Our one-to-one -one property can be applied for both exponents and logarithms. Um, if I'm using exponents, the one-to-one -one property tells me that if the bases are the same, then I can know that my exponents are equal. So for example, if I start with 2 to the x plus 3 is equal to 4, well, I want to solve for this x that is in my exponent. There's a couple of different ways to do this. I can take the natural log of both sides and work through it that way or I can make my bases match. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that this is already base two and I can rewrite four as base two. Four is the same thing as two squared. Now this fits my one-to-one -one property because the bases are the same. When the bases are the same, then I know that my exponents are equal to each other because I've said that this equation is balanced. I've said that 2 to the x plus 3, whatever x is, is going to be the same thing worth the same amount as 2 squared. If that is true, since my bases are the same, that means, therefore, that my exponents are equal to each other, and I know how to solve for x here. I can just subtract 3 from both sides, and I get that x is equal to negative 1. So let's go back and check that. If x were negative 1, then this exponent would be negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So 1 to 1 property for exponents, if I can make my bases match, then I can set the exponents equal to each other. Now for logarithms. Again, if the bases are the same, this time I can say the arguments are equal. So for example, if I am presented with log base 2 of x equal to log base 2 of 15, and I need to solve for x, x is the argument for this left side of my equation. Well, this meets my one-to-one -one property definition. My bases are the same. Those twos are the same. Because my bases are the same, I can say that my arguments, therefore, are equal to each other and x is just 15. That's my one-to-one -one property. I love the one-to-one -one property. The one-to-one -one property makes life a lot easier when we can use it. So let's, let's do some concept and vocabulary check questions. We'll do a little bit of practice through this, and then we're going to do some practice on the next page. So if b to the m equals b to the n, note that my bases are the same then to my one-to-one -one property tells me that my exponents are equal to each other. Therefore, if I have 2 to the 4x minus 1, and I'm told that that is equal to 2 to the 7th, then according to that one-to-one -one property, I know that 4x minus 1 is equal to 7. Now, I'm just wanting to get this, but you know what? We could go ahead and come over here and solve for x. We know that 4x minus 1 is equal to 7, so we're going to add that 1 to both sides and get 4x is equal to 8. And then when I divide both sides by 4, I figure out that x is equal to 2. Let's plug that in to check. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 1 is 7, 2 to the 7th is equal to 2 to the 7th. Okay, number 3. Um, if x times natural log of 9 is equal to natural log of 20, then what is x equal to? So here I'm being asked to solve for x. There's more than one way to do this. The most direct way is to say, you know what, I'm multiplying over here on the left, 
How would I solve for x? Well, I divide both sides. I divide both sides by that natural log of 9. So x, then, is equal to natural log of 20 over natural log of 9. That is exact. If I want an exact answer, I'm done. What if I'm happy with an approximation? Plug that into your calculator and round to two decimal places. You should get a rounded off answer of 1.36 when you do natural log 20 divided by natural log 9. All right, let's look at number four. Number four says e if e to the 0.6x is equal to 6, then what is 0.6x equal to? Well, what can we do to this? I can rewrite this. This is an exponential form, and I can rewrite this into log form because my log statement, the answer is the exponent. So if the answer is the exponent, that means I have the log statement on the other side of the equation. What is my base? Well, my base is e. When my base is e, I write it as natural log. Natural log of, natural log of the argument. So natural log of the argument is equal to that exponent. All I did was use my definition of logarithm to rewrite my exponential form into logarithmic form. Number five. On number five, I have if log base five of x plus one is equal to three, then what do I do with that? Well, again, I've got this time I've got my argument here. I'm starting in log form and I've solved, I've got my argument. Well, if I start in log form, one thing that is my go to is to use my definition of logarithm. I can turn this back into exponential form. There's my argument. So the other part here is going to be my base raised to an exponent. Well, what's my base? My base is 5. My exponent is 3. So 5 cubed is equal to that argument x plus 1. I can always go back and forth from exponential form to logarithmic form. Logarithmic form back to exponential form. Keep in mind that you can change things back and forth from one form to the other to help you solve. Now for this one, I'm not asked to do anything else, but I could, couldn't I? I could go ahead and solve for x. I would have x plus 1 is equal to, well, 5 cubed is 125. So x then would be equal to 124. Does that work? 124 plus 1 is 125. Log base 5 of 125, yep, that's 3. All right, number 6. On number 6, I have two log statements equal to 2. Well, when I have two individual log statements combined with addition, I can rewrite that, condense it using my product rule. So log base 3 of, and I know I'm going to multiply in the argument. If I multiply in the argument x times x plus 1, that becomes x squared plus x because I'm distributing that x. So log base 3 of x squared plus x is equal to 2. Now I can stop here because that's all I've been asked to do. Or I could go ahead and see what I would do to finish solving. What would I do to finish solving? Well, I need to get this x out of the argument. The best way to do that is to use my definition of logarithm and rewrite my log statement in exponential form. In exponential form, I have my base raised to my exponent equal to my, log my argument. Well, 3 squared is just 9. This is quadratic. So I can write this as 0 equals x squared plus x minus 9. I've got a quadratic equation to solve. How do I solve a quadratic equation? Well, first I try to factor. This is not factorable. So the next step would be to use my quadratic formula. We're going to leave that here instead of doing the quadratic formula because I want us to be focusing on solving log equations. Um, you guys ought to know how to solve using the quadratic formula. Since this isn't factorable and I need to use the quadratic formula, that means my solutions are either going to be irrational 
or imaginary. If they're imaginary, I just have no solutions. It's not going to work. If they're irrational, I would need to plug in and check just to make sure that I have positive values there for my arguments because my argument has to be positive. Number seven. On number seven, I am given a natural log equal to another natural log. This is another opportunity because my bases match. It's an opportunity to use my one to my one to one property. Since the bases match, I can say the arguments are equal. So I have x minus three is equal to the other argument. That rational expression that's kind of ugly. How would I go about solving this? I'm not asked to. This is, this is exactly where I was headed. But how would I go about solving that? Well, if I wanted to, I would multiply both sides by the denominator to get this x plus 1 out of the denominator. That would give me 7x minus 23 is equal to, and then I would have to FOIL that. So I would have 7x minus 23 is equal to x squared negative 3x plus x is a negative 2x, and then minus 3. Well, it's quadratic, so I want to set it equal to 0. So I subtract the 7x, so I would have x squared minus 9x now. I would add the 23, which would be plus 20, and my factors of 20 that add to negative 9 would be minus x minus 4, x minus 5, so that works x minus 5, x minus 4, that's factorable. That gives me proposed solutions of 4 and 5. Now I want to I want to double check and make sure that these were going to work. If I plug in 4, 4 minus 3 is 1, that's okay. If I plug in 4, I get 28 minus 23 over 5, that's okay. Those are both positive values. Um, 5 is even bigger, which means it's going to work as well. So that would be my solution set for that um, that log equation. Okay, 8 through 11 give us true-false problems to take a look at. True or false? x to the fourth equals 15 is an exponential equation. Well, that is false because my variable is the base. Number 9, true or false? 4 to the x equals 15 is an exponential equation. This time it's a true statement because my variable is the exponent. Number 10, true or false? Negative 3 is a solution of this equation. Log base 5 of 9 equals 2 times log base 5 of x. Well, is that true or false? If I take negative 3 and I plug it in for x, that makes this argument negative. And back in the, in the two, a couple of sections ago when we introduced our log equations, we said those arguments have to be positive because there's no way I'm going to raise a base to an exponent, a, a real positive exponent, and get a negative argument. So that is false. That proposed solution does not work. Number 11, true or false? Negative 10 is a solution for this log equation. Well, is this automatically false because negative 10 is negative? No. I have to plug the proposed solution in and check. Now, if I had proposed it for number this one up here, that's false. It doesn't work. But my argument here is not just x. My argument is x plus 35. And negative 10 plus 35 gives me a positive argument, 25. 5, log base 5 of 25 is 2. That's correct. That is true. So don't just automatically assume that a proposed negative x value doesn't work. You have to plug it in and check to see how it fits into the argument. You thought that just two pages meant we were going to be have a nice quick video, didn't you? <laughs> have a little bit of work to do with these. The first half of this next page says to solve each exponential expression by using the one-to-one -one property. That tells you that you are going to be able to rewrite each equation with the same base on both sides. We're going to go through and we're going to rewrite each of these together before we think about finishing and solving. So our first task is going to be going through all of these and rewriting them 
with the base the same. Now, I'm going to do all the evens with you on, on that first column, that left-hand column, and then I'm going to pause the video and expect you to do the other column um, and then come back and check. So on this left-hand column, I need to rewrite the same base. Well, I've got 2 to the x equals 64. I can rewrite 64 as 2 to a power. I may need to go through and, and do a little bit of work with my calculator to figure it out if I don't know how many 2's multiplied together give me 64. It turns out that 64 is 2 to the 6th. Now on number 14, my base is going to be 5, so I have 5 to the x equals 5 cubed because 125 is 5 cubed. Now if I don't know that, here's how I can use my calculator to help me figure it out. I know my base is going to be 5 and I need to know how many 5's I need to multiply together. Well 5 times 5 is 25, that's 2 5's. Times another 5, there I am, 125 and that's 3 5's. For 2 to the 6th as 64, let's just start with 2 times 2, that's 4, times another 2 is 8, times another 2 is 16, times another 2, that's 5 2's, is 32, and if I go one more, that 6 2's gives me 64. Okay, let's look at number 16 and get our common base. I've got a base 2 over here to the 2x minus 1. That's going to be equal to 2 to some power. Uh, we just found that 2 to the 5th is 32. Now on 18, I have options. I can either use base 4 or I can take them both to base 2. I'm going to choose to use base 4. 4 to the 2x minus 1 is equal to 4 cubed. If I had chosen to go to base 2, well, that would be 4 is 2 squared, so that would be 2 times 2x minus 1 as my exponent equals, and then over here, 2 to the 6th gives me um, 64. So either one of these setups is correct on number 18. But notice if I go to 2 here, I have to put this already exponent, the exponent that I start with, in parentheses to make sure that I distribute that new exponent of 2 inside. On number 20, I can't use 8 and I can't use 32 because it's too big, but I can use 2 for both bases. Well, 2 to the 5th is 32. I already have an x in my exponent, so that is 2 to the 5x and 2 cubed is 8. On number 22, I have to use 3 as my base. I already have an x in that exponent. 3 squared is 9. 3 cubed is 27. And then on number 24, I'm going to use 3 as my base. So I have 3 to the 1 minus x equals 3 to the, well, 3 cubed is 27. 3 to the negative 3 is 1 over 27. We're going to go ahead and finish this column together. Um, next step for each of these. One to one property says if the bases are the same, then my exponents are equal. So this very simply says that x is 6. For the second one, I have x is 3. For number 16, I have two different ways to start. I can either start with 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. Let's come up here and look at 16. 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. Well, I move that 1 over and I get 2x is equal to 6, and then divide by 2 and I get that x is equal to 3. Or if I started with this equation, I would have 2 times 2x minus 1 is equal to 6. Distribute that 2. That gives me 4x minus 2 is equal to 6. I add the 2 and I get 4x is equal to 8. And then when I divide by 4, I get x is equal to um, x is equal to 2. What did I do wrong here, guys? I hate it when I get all the way through my problem and I have done something wrong. Um, 64 is 2 to the 6th. What about over here? 
If I add one, I get six. That gives me a three. Oh, that's what I did wrong. You guys were up there yelling at me. This problem is number 18, not number 16. I didn't do anything wrong except look at the wrong problem. Um, that problem is number 18. That's an alternate use for number 18. Okay, so I didn't do any math wrong. Number 16, we got x equals 3 because we solved for 2x minus 1 equals 5. Number 18, if we solved this side, we got x equals 2 because we distributed that 2. The other way to do number 18 is right here where we have 2x minus 1 equals 3. So let's do that. 2x minus 1 equals 3. I add that 1 and I get 2x equals 4. And then I divide by 2 and I get x equals 2 no matter which way I work it. That was going to be embarrassing. Okay. So make sure that you keep your things lined up. Two different ways to set this up depending on whether I do base 4 or base 2. If they're done correctly, it works out either way. Make sure you use the right problem for the right number. Number 20, base is 2, base is the same, so my exponents are equal, which gives me 5x equals to 3. So if 5x equals 3, then when I divide both sides by 5, I get that x is equal to 3 fifths. On number 22, the bases are the same. They're both 3, so my exponents are equal. So I have 2x is equal to 3. So I'm going to divide by 2, and I get that x is equal to 3 halves. And then on number 24, I have 3 to the 1 minus x equals um, 3 to the negative 3. The bases are the same, so I can say my exponents are equal. Let's, let's do this one over here. Because of all those negatives, it can be a little confusing. So 1 minus x equals negative 3. If I subtract 1 from both sides, I get that negative x is equal to negative 4. We don't want negative x, we want positive x. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And when I divide both sides by negative 1, it changes the sign so that I have x equals 4 for that result. Now for the odds, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to give you the answer. I want you to make sure that you know how to find it. So if you are in an all online class, you need to go through and work these and make sure that you get these values for x. This is all x equals. Make sure you know how to make the bases match to get there to that, to that result column. Um, if you are in a class that meets with me for uh, BBCU class time, Blackboard Collaborate class time, we'll go over those then. All right. Use the one-to-one -one property when you can. One-to-one -one property, that's what we've been working with in all of those examples. Use the one-to-one -one property when you can. It's usually the quickest and easiest, and we want to keep things quick and easy because we are more likely to be accurate. If there is one log statement, you're going to use your definition of logarithm. Definition of logarithm tells me that I can rewrite my log statement in exponential form every single time. So if I can use my one-to-one -one property to solve, I can. If I can't, and there's just one log statement, then I use my definition of logarithm. For example, I have my x in the argument. I can't do anything with it there. So I'm going to rewrite this log equation in exponential form. What's my base? Well, common log, so it's base 10. That answer is my exponent, and that's equal to my argument. Now I can solve for x. 10 to the fourth is a 1 with four zeros equal to x minus 3. So when I add 3 to the other side, I get that 10,003 is equal to x, and that's my result. I take a quick check and say, you know what? If I plug that in for x, that's going to be OK. So that works. That's a valid solution. What if I have more than one log statement, though? If there's more than one log statement, we're going to apply our rules for logarithms. When we apply our rules for logarithms, this should allow us to simplify so that we can solve. OK, so here I have two log statements on the left and a log statement on the right. 
On the left, I can use my product rule to combine these two statements so that I have log base 2 of, and then when I multiply the arguments together, that argument would be x squared plus 2x is equal to log base 2 of 6x plus 1. Now, that product rule allowed me to get a single log statement on each side, and those log statements have the same base. When we have the same base, we can use our one-to-one -one property. So we used our product rule, and now we're going to use our one-to-one -one property. When the bases are the same, the arguments are equal. So x squared plus 2x is equal to 6x plus 1. That's quadratic. Um, let's set this up equal to zero so that we can solve our quadratic equation. We're going to move everything over to the left to keep that squared term positive. That gives me x squared um, minus 6x would be a negative 4x, and then minus 1 equals zero. Whoops, I am so sorry. That is not factorable. I don't have factors of 1 that are going to add to give me negative 4. That is not factorable. How do I solve a quadratic that is not factorable? Well, I go to my quadratic formula. My quadratic formula would be x equals negative b is a positive 4 plus or minus square root of b squared. Well, negative 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Uh, let's do this. We get 4 plus or minus square root of this becomes plus 4, so that's square root of 20 over 2. Square root of 20, 20 is 4 times 5, and 4 is a, is a perfect square. So that square root of 20 becomes 2 square roots of 5, and then I can simplify that. 4 over 2 is just 2, and then 2 over 2 gives me square root 5. So I've got two proposed solutions, 2 plus the square root 5 and 2 minus square root 5. Will both of those work? Well, remember that I've got this x here as my argument, so I can only use positive values. So let's check that out. Um, if I have 2 plus the square root of 5, that's not going to be a problem. So what I really need to check is 2 minus the square root of 5. 2 minus square root 5 is a negative 0.2, etc. Well, if I plug in a negative here, that does not work. That is, that is not a positive argument. So I have two proposed solutions. Um, x equals 2 minus square root 5 is extraneous. It doesn't work because it's negative. So my solution is just x plus square root 5. All right, let's do this next one. If there are two exponential expressions with different bases and I can't make my bases match. If I can make my bases match, I use my one-to-one -one property. But if I can't make my bases match, I take the natural log of both sides. Now, I talked to you about this. Um, I mentioned this when we were talking about our one-to-one -one property. I'm going to take the, the base, the natural log of both sides so that I start with natural log, natural log of 7 to the x minus 4 equals natural log of 5 squared. Okay, well, I can use my power rule. That gives me x minus 4 times the natural log of 7 is equal to 2 times the natural log of 5. Notice that I had to put my exponent in parentheses because my exponent has two terms. The simplest thing to do here is going to be, because I'm trying to get this x by itself, so the simplest step here is going to be to divide out this natural log. So I'm going to divide both sides by natural log of 7. That leaves me with x minus 4 equal to 2 times natural log of 5 over natural log of 7. I have to finish solving for this x. Now when I finish solving for this x, I'm out of room here, so we're going to move up here. When I finish solving for this x, that means adding 4 to both sides. So x is equal to 
2 natural log 5 divided by natural log 7 plus 4. This is exact. This is the only way to do this exactly. If an approximate answer is okay, then I can put that into my calculator. I want you to put that into your calculator and check. Round it to two decimal places. Make sure that you get this approximate value of 5.65.